the 2021 MLB offseason. It's pretty much over, and we're going to go over the winners and losers of the 2021 MLB offseason in today's video. But before I get into this video, six eight percent of you that watch these videos are not subscribed, get your life together, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and leave a like on this video. Subscribe, turn on notifications, and leave a like. We're going to go through all 30 teams, and we're going to say if they're a winner or a loser. So, yeah, like, subscribe, turn on notifications. Let's go ahead and get into this video. Waste no time. So, neither in a in the winner or loser category is the Baltimore Orioles, Cincinnati Reds, Detroit Tigers, and Seattle Mariners. Did not make a major league signing. Rockies, Pirates, Orioles. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and get into this video. Let's start off with the losers. And the first loser is going to go to the Boston Red Sox, who signed Garrett Richards, Marwin Gonzalez, and Kiki Hernandez. And they traded Andrew Benintendi to the Red Sox, which I made a whole video on that, so make sure you check that out. But I was not particularly a big fan of the Boston Red Sox. Obviously, I thought they could have done a lot more. I know they don't have a lot of salary. Sal they have salary issues, obviously. But I think they could have done a little more with their money. And I think they could have. I think they could have done a little better, honestly. I wasn't expecting them to sign a Trevor Bauer or a player like that, but I was expecting them to. I just think they're a loser, um, especially with how better the AL East got with the Blue Jays signing George Springer and the Yankees resigning Mayhew and trading for Tayon. And yeah, Red Sox losers. Marlins, they are a loser because the whole NL East got better and. I don't really think with these moves they got better. Now, the Marlins still are a good team. They're still a good team, and they are one of the best teams if you're looking at the future of Major League Baseball. They signed Anthony Bass and Adam Duvall this offseason. And for the Marlins here, it was not a great offseason, especially for what the other NL East teams were doing. But I still could see them maybe getting a 500 record. Do I expect them to be in third, second, or first place in the NL East? No. But I think they could still finish with a 500 record in like fourth or fifth place, honestly. That is how stacked that division is. Next is the Brewers. And the Brewers, they just need to do more. And it mainly starts with their starting rotation. They have some okay arms in that starting rotation. But signing Colton Long, and that was about it, is a disappointing offseason. I think you could have done a lot more. Your hitting is quite awful. And Colton Long is not addressing that issue at all with their hitting being bad. Obviously, they do have Christian Yelich, who was the MVP of the National League in, what was it, 2019 or 2018, whichever. Um, but their hitting besides that is not really good. They still have Keston here, Lorenzo Kane. But for this Brewers team, they didn't address their biggest issue here, and signing Colton Long is the absolute opposite, as good as he is defensively and not really offensively. Rockies, they are a huge loser. They traded Nola Arenado. For what I would consider pennies. And it's just not a good move. And I don't really think it's a good move not rebuilding here. Because this team, they're just not in the right position to compete with or without Nolan Arenado. I think they should trade Trevor Story, Herman Marquez, Kyle Freeland. Any person that has value on this Colorado Rockies team should be gone. Next, for the Diamondbacks, they're losers too. They signed Joe Kim Sori and that was about their only move. They need relief pitching, and they need relief pitching badly. And they didn't address that. They will be one of the better teams in the future with Christian Robinson and other players coming up in their minor leagues it, that will soon be major leaguers for them. But this team is just – they just did not have a good offseason at all, in my opinion. Um, Giants, they're a loser too. They signed Tommy Listell, Alex Wood, which is not a bad offseason – but once again, it's the same with the Brewers here. You didn't address your biggest need. And your biggest need was starting pitching. And they have yet to make really any moves starting pitching-wise. Tampa Bay Rays here. I hate to put them in the losers category. And I still think they'll find a way to be very competitive because the Rays always do. But you traded Blake Snell, which is not a step in the right direction. I tend to think... They are more not a winner, not a loser here because I think they, I think there's arguments for both. So they're kind of in that neither a winner or a loser category because I do think their package for Blake Snell back was pretty good. I just don't necessarily – they're a winner and a loser here. 
Next is the Cubs. They traded you Darvish for really not much at all. Pretty much pennies on the dime once again and signed Jack Peterson and Trevor Williams. So the you Darvish move is definitely a step back and then you're trying to make a step forward with Jack Peterson and Trevor Williams. It just doesn't make a ton of sense here. Like I don't really understand what this Cubs team is doing. They're kind of in the wrong direction because Javier Baez you're going to have to pay. Anthony Rizzo you're going to have to pay or Anthony Rizzo is not where they play that. Contract is going to be coming. Javier Baez, Chris Bryant, they're going to have to be paying a lot of players. And I think they should be going more in that rebuilding direction. Twins, re-signed Nelson Cruz, signed Alex Kame. That's about it this offseason for the Twins. And for what the White Sox did this offseason, signing Liam Hendricks, signing Adam Eaton and other players and trading for Lance Lynn, obviously. I mean, I just don't think it was that great of an offseason. Cleveland. They come in the losers category too. They traded Lindor and Carrasco, signed Eddie Rosario. Now, I do believe that they wouldn't have re signed Lindor. So I do think they should have traded Lindor. So they're a winner in the sense that you get assets back for Francisco Lindor when you most likely were not going to be able to re sign him. They signed Eddie Rosario, who plays great in progressive field. Maybe he can keep that up and they address the need there. Angels, another loser. All they have done is side Jose Quintana and that and traded for Alex Cobb and Dexter Fowler, two bad contracts. They legitimately, I think, are trying to build the team of bad contracts. You've got Alex Cobb, you've got Dexter Fowler, you've got Albert Pujols, you've got Justin Upton. You've got just so many bad contracts on this team. And they're bad contracts that I don't think many teams would want to take on. You didn't sign Trevor Bauer, which I think you should have, or a James Paxton. I just, it's not a very good offseason at all. Astros, not much of anything. I mean, yeah, they sound like Pedro Baez, but eh. Did not re-sign at Springer or really get that much of bullpen help. A's, another loser here. Not much of anything, no major league contracts even. Did not re-sign Hendricks or Simeon, just like I expected. So they're definitely a loser this offseason. Their team has got worse. First team in the winners is the Texas Rangers. I think the Rangers had a very solid offseason for what you're looking for here. They traded the Lance Land for Dane Dunning. One thing I think they needed to do, they signed David Dahl and some other pieces here. I think this was a good offseason by the Rangers here for what you can do while still – you're not going to be the greatest team. Next is the Royals. I think this Royals offseason was underrated and actually is a very decent offseason for the Royals. Trade for Andrew Minatendi. Signing Carlos Santana, Mike Miner, Greg Holland, some other assets that could possibly move, be moved at the trade deadline. And I really like the idea of that. You're trying to cash in for prospects by getting some of those players like a Carlos Santana, Mike Miner. And I like that. White Sox. Definitely a winner. They signed Liam Hendricks, Adam Eaton, and traded for Lance Lynn. They are definitely a winner. Blue Jays, they signed George Springer, Kirby Yates, Marcus Simeon. They signed a bunch of really, really good players this offseason. And the Blue Jays team, they they are pretty good. Yankees, re-signing DJ L. Mayhew, trading for Jameson Ty and signed Corey Kluber. They definitely address their starting pitching need, and that's what I like here. You address that starting pitching need, and that's what I've said, and that's why I did not put them to win the World Series last year. And it's and there are some risky moves with Jameson Tyon and Corey Kluber, obviously, but re-signing DJ Mayhew is a very good move, not, nothing less. Phillies, re-signing JT Real Muto, signing Archie Bradley. They're winners because they re-signed JT Real Muto, but they're losers in a sense, too, because they didn't really help they are relief pitching that much, nor starting pitching. So, yeah. Nationals, they have to be a winner here. Signing Brad Hand, Kyle Schwarber, John Lester, Josh Bill. They definitely made some big moves this offseason. Mets, they traded for Francisco Lindor, Carlos Carrasco. They signed James McCann, Trevor May, Aaron Loop. Now, obviously, you didn't get Trevor Bauer or George Springer. But if my favorite team traded for Francisco Lindor, then I would be really, really happy, and I would count that as a win of an offseason, honestly. Next is the Atlanta Braves, who signed Charlie Morton. Really big move there because they definitely needed some starting pitching help. And they just relied on, like, Bryce Wilson really too much, in my opinion. And re-signing Marcelo Zuna. Cardinals, they are a huge winner this offseason. Trading for Nolan Arenado is a huge win this offseason, in my opinion. Padres, 
Once again, trading for Blake Snell, Yu Darvish, signing Hassan Kim, and Mark Melanson. And our final winner on this list is the Dodgers. They signed Trevor Bauer and re-signed Justin Turner. The Dodgers have to be winners here. I really like the way the Dodgers team is run, too. They don't spend – they're they're not cheap like the Pirates. And, obviously, they are in a bigger market than the Pirates. But they don't – they're not cheap like that. So, yeah, that's going to be the end of this video. Those are the winners and losers of the 2021 MLB offseason, in my opinion. Leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, because 68% of you that watch like these videos are not subscribed. Get your life together. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, leave a like. Thank you for watching, and peace.